Hello and welcome to Datacast. Before we begin, if for some reason you're having difficulty getting RStudio Desktop to work, then I recommend trying out RStudio Cloud at rstudio.cloud. The free version has its limitations, but it's a viable alternative to the desktop version if, for example, you're on a work machine uh, and that won't let you download and install desktop applications. Now, we covered quite a lot in the last video, so we're going to slow down a bit today and focus on one topic, Git. It's a big topic, so I've split this into two videos, uh, and we're going to start with the basics today. So here we are in our studio, um, and I'm going to create my first R project. You can think of a project in our studio as just a way of organizing our code. Um, to create a project, uh, I'm going to select File and New Project. Then we get this pop-up window and we're going to put this into a brand new directory. So I'm choosing new directory uh, and it is a new project. We can ignore all these other things. Uh, directory name, uh, I'm just going to call this r underscore tutorial, but uh, you can call yours whatever you want. Uh, and I'm going to make sure that I create a Git repository and then I can click create project. If you watched my very first video, then this isn't the first time you've heard of Git and GitHub. But what is Git? Well, the purpose of Git is to manage a project or a set of files as they change over time. Git stores this information in a data structure called a Git repository. And what I've just said there is taken word for word from a great tutorial about Git that I will link to in the description box down below. But I also wanted to show this image from that tutorial to visualize what's going on here. Now the left hand side shows you what's happening in the local repository, which is Git on my computer. The right hand side shows what's happening in the remote repository, which is GitHub on the web. The working directory is the same thing as the R project that we just created, which is where everything starts from. The staging area is what we add files to if we want to track changes to them. The local repo is the repository itself to which we commit these files that we want to track. And the remote repo is where we push those committed files to uh, if we want to back them up and optionally to make them available to others. Pay attention to the verbs that I use there. Add, commit, and push. These are all git commands and we'll use them quite a lot. All right, so here's my project. Uh, which at this stage uh, doesn't contain very much. You can see on the right hand side, it has this r underscore tutorial dot proj file. Uh, and this is what I can double click on um, in a folder in the future if I want to open my project. And I also have this dot git ignore file. That's a file that was created when we initiated a git repository. So let's open that one up by clicking on it. So what this is doing is listing files within this projects directory that will be ignored by git. And these particular files are actually hidden files. Let's look at the mechanics of this again. When I want to use version control for my work, I stage files, which essentially means telling Git, here are the files I want you to look after for me. The .gitignore file lists the files that will be ignored by Git, which right now amounts to the files that you see listed here. And all of which, if you like, are system files. I can't even see them down here in my working directory because they're not files that we're going to do anything with. Now I can edit this file uh, and include um, anything else that I want Git to ignore. Um, so for example, API keys that I won't change and certainly don't want to share with others. So Git knows which files to ignore. And when we start writing code, it will become aware of which files it maybe needs to do something with. But of course, no matter what I do with Git here, I'm only using version control on my local machine. If I want to back up my work and share it with others, then I need a remote repository on GitHub. So let's switch over to GitHub. Now this is optional, but if you don't want to type in your username and password every time you push files to GitHub, then you'll need to set up SSH. So to do this, make sure that you're logged into your account as I am here, and then um, click on your user icon on the top right hand side, and then down at the bottom, select settings. And then in this left hand menu, if you select SSH and GPG keys. Now this is where we will create a new SSH key. The way this works is I create a new SSH key on my local machine and I'll paste that here in GitHub to provide that secure gateway. To get hold of the SSH key, let's switch back to our studio. Now, if we go to Tools, 
global options, you get this new window, and then we go down to git slash svn, and there's this button here called create RSA key. When you click create, it will produce your SSH key, and that's what you need to paste back over on GitHub. You'll then get a file, and you can point to that file back here in our studio. You can see that I'm pointing to this file here. Now, I realize I haven't gone through this in a lot of detail, but like I said, it's optional, and it's only something you need to do once to get set up. I'll link to more information about this in the description box down below as well. So at this point, we have the foundations in place. Git is installed on our machine. We have a GitHub account and we've set up our SSH key so that our local machine and GitHub can securely communicate with each other without requiring our login details every time. In addition, we've created a new R project, which we can see down here, and we initiated a new Git repository as part of that. And then we looked at this git ignore file uh, and we've understood that it's listing the files that Git will ignore. Okay, so in my next video, I'll show you what we want Git to do with the files that we haven't told it to ignore. And from there, we can easily use version control as we continue coding in our studio. See you next time.